let us go to the few of the questions from GPAC 2018 which are apply level questions. The following is not true for furosemide. A. Causes hypokalemia. B. Causes hypouricemia. And C. Causes hypomagnesemia. And D. Acts by inhibiting the sodium reabsorption. So furosemide produces all hypos but it causes the hyperuricemia. So if you apply the concept you can easily observe that it causes the hypouricemia is not true for furosemide. Similarly, what quantity of an indicator solution shall be added when quantity is not mentioned in the SAR test? Options are 0.1 ml, B 0.05 ml, 0.2 ml and 0.5 ml. So whenever the indicator is, whenever the quantity is not specified, the two drops of the indicator that is 0.1 ml of the indicator should be added. So if you know each drop is 0 0.05, then you can say that 0 0.1 ml is the, the volume of the indicator to be added. So each drop is 0 0.05 ml approximately. Identify the correct pair from the following. Sympathetic stimulation, bronchoconstriction. Parasympathetic stimulation, secretion of gastric juice. Sympathetic stimulation, contraction of pupil. And parasympathetic stimulation, dilatation of the pupil. So again, if you apply what are the actions of the sympathetic and parasympathetic system, you can get the right answer. So here, parasympathetic stimulation produces the secretion of the gastric juice. At I, both sympathetic and parasympathetic system act quite oppositely. So both C as well as D are the wrong answers. So the right answer is the parasympathetic stimulation produces secretion of the gastric juice. So when you apply the concept, you can eliminate few of the options and you can get the right answer in such type of questions. Which functional group is crucial for anti malarial activity of the artemisinin? A. Aldehydic functional group B. Ethylene bridge C. Ketonic functional group and D. Peroxide bridge So here you should know what is the structure of the artemisinin and it is have, which type of functional group it is having. The answer for this question is a peroxide bridge which is there, which is an endoperoxide which is responsible for the anti-malarial activity of the artemisinin. What is the concentration of the paracetamol in a 0.1 normal sodium hydroxide solution whose absorption in a 1 cm cell at its lambda max 257 nanometer was found to be 0.825. The A1 person 1 cm in the IP monograph of the paracetamol is given as 715 at 257 nanometer. So options are 1.1 gram per 100 ml and 0.0011 mg per 100 ml and 0.0011 gram per 100 ml and 0.0011 microgram per 100 ml. So this is one again one type one more apply type question. So where you have to collect the data and you have to apply an equation you should get the right answer with right units for the given parameter. So here the right answer is 0 0.0011 gram per 100 ml. So here you have to use the equation A is, A is equal to A1% 1 cm BC where you have to find out the concentration C. So you will get the concentration as 0 0.0011 gram per 100 ml. Appropriate hybridization schemes for the carbon atoms in the molecular formula CH3COOHR. SP3 and SP sp3 and sp2 sp2 and sp and sp3 and sp so here the right answer is the sp3 and sp2 so ch3 carbon is sp3 hybridized and carbonyl carbon is sp2 hybridized so again if you apply the logic here you can identify which carbon is sp3 and which carbon is sp2 which statement regarding the huckel's rule is false there must be 4n plus 2 pi electrons the molecule must be planar, the molecule must be cyclic and each of the pi electrons must be associated with a conjugated double bond. So here D is the false statement and answer for this question. So each pi electron must be associated with a conjugated single bond not with the double bond. So D is the answer. So if you again apply the concept you will get the answer for this question. Which among the following correctly defines a diastereomer? These have same magnitude but different signs of optical rotation. 
non superimposable object mirror relationship these differ in all physical properties and separation is very difficult and again if you know the properties of the diastereomer and you can easily say that the diastereomers differ in all physical property so they can be easily separated so C is the right answer for this question so these are the few of the applied level questions that were asked in the GPAT 2018 now let us see few of the questions from GPAT 2018 which were asked in the advanced level select the drug which exhibits dual alpha and beta adrenergic receptor agonist activity so here a tetbutalin B chloridine, C metaproteinol, and D dobutamine. So you have to identify first of all drugs belongs to which category and on which receptor they are acting like either agonist or antagonist. Then you have to identify which is acting on both alpha as well as beta receptor. So here one of the answer is the dobutamine. Dobutamine is having the dual activity on the alpha as well as beta receptors actually dobutamine is more selective for beta 1 receptor so it's called as beta 1 agonist but it's also having some action on the alpha receptor so d is the answer for this question dobutamine is actually a beta 1 agonist even it is selective for beta 1 receptor it also shows dual activity and acts on both beta as well as alpha receptor so dobutamine is the answer for this question which of the following equilibrium suggests non-competitive inhibition of enzyme E for conversion of the substrate S to the product P with inhibitor I? So different options are given like this is a A and B and C and D. Now you can see the inhibitor is acting on the A on the enzyme substrate complex and in the option B it is acting on both enzyme as well as enzyme substrate complex and in the C it is acting on only the enzyme and on the D it is acting on the product so if again if you know the concept of enzyme inhibition which is of three types like competitive to non competitive to and uncompetitive to non competitive inhibition is a mechanism in which the inhibitor inhibits the both enzyme as well as enzyme substrate complex so you can easily identify the option B is the right answer for non competitive inhibition of the enzyme E so this is again an advanced level of question which you have to apply the concept to find out the what is the right answer from the given options. So B is the right answer for this question. To obtain a more effective bronchodilatation, the drugs that are combined along with beta adrenoceptor agonists are A. Cholinergic antagonists, B. Cholinergic agonists and C. Beta adrenoceptor antagonists and D alpha adrenoceptor antagonists so here the right answer is cholinergic antagonists so cholinergic antagonists like ipratropium can be combined with the bronchodilators like the beta 2 agonists so again this is an advanced level of question particularly from the therapeutics so whenever beta 2 receptors are ineffective in alone we can add the cholinergic antagonists to increase the bronchodilatation Particularly in the COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disorder, we will use the cholinergic antagonist along with the beta 2 agonist. So again, if you know in-depth concept, you can answer this question. So these are the advanced level questions asked in the GPAT 2018, which requires a sound knowledge and a strong grip on the concept. So if you see the 2018 question pattern, the basic level questions are around 75 to 80 and apply level questions are around 45 to 40 and advanced level questions are around 10 to 5. So it can be easily qualified by just attempting the basic level questions until unless you are getting very very less negative marking. And if you have a good preparation, you can also attempt a number of questions in the apply level where you can score more from these apply level questions and advanced level questions can also be answered if you have a strong grip in the concept and you are so confident about the right answer so in this way choose the best questions from the gpad and get a good score and just think about the level of the question and you can be easily qualified and even you can get a good score by attempting the number of questions from the basic level to the apply level questions Hope this statistical analysis of 2018 GPAD paper helps your preparation. Thank you for watching this video.